Well, welcome to another of our uh, Books of the Year clips from uh, Word in Uria. And this is one of the books we absolutely loved. This is Small Hours, The Long Night of John Martin by Graham Thompson, who was on the podcast and very entertaining he was about it too. And I think it highlights the fascinating issue that um, if you discover unlovable aspects of a songwriter's character? Does it affect your relationship with their music? You know, and a lot of John Martin's songs were, you know, charmingly soft and sunny and romantic. And we discover from this book, as if we didn't already know actually, but in far greater detail, that firstly, you know, he was unbelievably driven, wasn't he? Incredibly driven. There's a bit where he tells Linda Thompson very early on, I'm going to be terribly famous because I'm fabulous. The level of self-belief is phenomenal. <laughs> and he's a kind of deceiver and a fantasist, isn't he, Dave? You know, he, he invents all those fictions about his life, you know, that he'd been to Cambridge University, that he'd spent time in a monastery, um, you know, that he'd taken part in the in the Tour de France, you know, that he'd travelled to Morocco on the hash trail, you know, and none of those things were particularly true. It's only what Bob Dylan did, didn't he? Entirely, Bob Dylan. No, absolutely. <laughs> completely invented. That, completely. You, you were kind of allowed to do that, weren't you? If, to, if you turned up with an acoustic guitar on your own, you on could do own. that. In a group, you couldn't do that. You, you can't have one member who pretends, dreams up. Yeah, because the bass player would say, uh, hang on, mate. We're, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're a, a polytechnic together. together. Yeah. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Tell you, that's his name. It's not his name at all. You Whereas know. there's something about a troubadour that he kind of wanders in, doesn't he? And also, you want him. You want him, want to, him to make, to up, be those, like that, to make up those stories. Exactly. And, it's unbelievably yeah. competitive. There's, there's bits where he's talking about his relationship with um, with John Renborn and Bert Yanch, which actually come to blows. I mean, physical fights. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he understood relationships where he thought he had the upper hand, like Nick Drake. Nick Drake was clearly no kind of threat and no competition, so he kind of felt he could deal with him. Hamish Imlach, who he just adored and worshipped and copied everything he did, you know. But otherwise, and the other thing, of course, is, is, is the kind of relationship with women, which is, you know, and there are pretty shocking details about the kind of levels of domestic abuse. There's a, there's a story about him uh, going, when they're living, he's living in, in Woodstock with, uh, with Beverly Martin. And they meet Bob Dylan. Do you remember that bit? And yeah, oh, yeah, Bob, yeah. Bob Dylan being Bob Dylan. Well, the fancy is Beverly Martin. Shows her a bit of attention. Nothing over the top. <laughs> and when they get home, John Martin just goes, really, really goes over the top, doesn't he? And opens up the cutlery door and starts throwing knives at her. So he's a very, very, very complicated guy. But then you discover, obviously, you know, the, the background. You know, drunk father. Yeah, yeah. The mother who abandoned him at a very early stage. Well, also so father, he, father a performer. You know, that, oh, yeah, 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 who turns so, up and heckles at his gigs, uh, yes, because he he couldn't it sort of couldn't deal with the fact that his son had more attention than he did, couldn't deal with it at all, you know, which I don't think is uncommon actually. If it, if it, if somebody comes from, from show folk stock, you know, yeah, uh, that that was uh, that was going through his veins all the time, yeah, definitely. Now, it's funny about the Bob Dylan thing that, um, you know, if you're a singer songwriter. Your worst nightmare is Bob Dylan turns up and and kind of uh, gets on the good side of your girlfriend. It's just your worst nightmare. Isn't totally it? your worst nightmare. How, he's, how he's would your Bob, girlfriend not be interested? He's Bob Dylan and you're not. You know. Know. <laughs> the, you know well, there's a great that, story. Do you remember that story of Joe Boyd? Oh yeah. Before? I'm sure you do. When Joe Boyd meets this girl at a club, you know, they get it on famously, and she says, and he's on a promise. Yeah. She says, look, come back and stay at my place. She said. She turned up about 11, you know, I'll be back, you know. It's just tremendous. Turns up at 11, there's just, let himself in, there's a note on her bedroom door saying, sorry, Bob Dylan dropped in. <laughs> the next morning, he describes this kind of rather miserable breakfast where he's pushing some cornflakes about. And then Dylan comes strolling out of this girl's bedroom. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. No, you know when you're beaten. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. No, but uh, this is, I know loads of uh, of, of word, uh, word in your ear followers and uh, and people on the website have, uh, have read this and have very much enjoyed it. And I think, you know, the thing for many people, it's been, you know, coming to terms with the, with the kind of maturity about, uh, about viewing music, you know, that you have to be able to separate the music from the person, no matter how much marketing and journalism is devoted to to tempting you to fuse the two and merge the two and lose one in the other, you know. But they are, they are kind of different things, aren't they? You, you know, well, they are, but, you know, I kind of felt reading this that there's two sides to this guy's personality, and he is both things. He is both a kind of Glaswegian oh, yeah. thug and a kind of sun-kissed hippie. And it's just <clears throat> various stages of his life, you know, one of those things is, is, is higher in the mix than the other. 
Yeah. And I yeah. also feel, I think when I was younger, I used to be really kind of, um, I used to find it quite difficult discovering r- really uh, rather horrendous things about people whose music I love. But the older I got, the more I thought, well, this is life. You know, people are complicated, you know. And actually it makes them somehow more enthralling to think that this strange person produced music that was so different from... Well, also, yeah, I mean, you think about some of the music you like, you know, particularly music from the kind of pre-rock and roll era, era. Listen, loads of jazz music you, you might like. You don't know anything about those people's personal Nothing lives. at all. <laughs> Nothing. You don't know anything about King Oliver, do you? No, you don't. Sidney Bechet, how they yeah. behaved with the people. In the, I'm not suggesting that I know anything, but, you know, there, there's just that kind of separation of the sound of them playing the instrument uh, that isn't there when it's somebody singing to you. Yeah. Because really. somebody's singing to you, it's trying to woo you to their point of view, isn't it? Aren't yeah. they? Uh, and if you find out that they're in the in their personal life, they were, you know, the, their their personal point of view wasn't uh, wasn't all that appealing. It may feel you've been had by some of the songs, you know. But it's an interesting challenge. And, but it's uh, a different thing, is it? To feel that with John Lennon, would, would would I have preferred John Lennon to spend more time picking up Julian from school, or would I have preferred him to be sitting at home writing "I'm Only Sleeping"? You know, no, that's true. and the answer, and it's same with with John Martin. You know, I don't think for a moment that. Uh, that I'd, I'd, I'd like him to have been raising money for charity instead of, uh, instead of writing Solid Air. But what a complicated guy. Oh, I was absolutely. going to read a little extract. Shall Go I read on, an extract? do that. I think talking about him being a complicated guy, this is an extract from when, <laughs> the period when he hooks up with Danny Thompson. Danny Thompson, of course, the um, preeminent folk string bass player who's in, you know, Pentangle, and played all his Nick Drake records. And, and they become a pair of absolute hell raises. Absolutely. It's astonishing. It's just a little episode here, which just gives you some idea of what it would be like to be, to be around him. This is from 1973, and it says, uh, in London, Thompson would take Martin to his East End haunts, to the Thomas and Beckett, once frequented by the Cray, Cray Twins, where the former British heavyweight champion Henry Cooper used to spar, or to the Fellmonger's Arms in Bermondsey, run by nasty Nick Axford, a <laughs> former boxer. <laughs> John used to get a bit outrageous trying to be with the villains, said Jackie McShee. Uh, they said to Danny, uh, don't bring him down here again, because he, wa- he wasn't a proper East End Bermondsey boy. I think John loved the danger of it. He-, he did love to surround himself with some pretty unpleasant characters, hangers-on and worse. Martin felt an open, almost innocent attraction to the criminal fraternity. He harboured a theory that villains and musicians had much in common. It's really interesting. Um, from the mid-70s onwards, he cultivated around him a loose affiliation of small-time felons, bank robbers, hard nuts and loose cannons, often employing one or more of them to drive him around or to manage him. I spent a long time being fascinated by gangsters and lowlifes, Martin admitted shortly before he died. Just interested in what made them tick and how they organised their lives. His daughter Vari attributed it to a simple romantic allure. Not everyone warmed to the Martin Thompson double act. It was the kind of behaviour which is often more amusing when reported secondhand or viewed from afar than witnessed up close. When the two of them were together, they were loud, hard drinking, a, a hard drinking force, uh, said Richard Thompson. You got pinned to the walls when they entered the room. It was so high energy. They were so inebriated, full of aggression. During that era, I used to try and avoid the two of them because it was just too much to handle. Very big and very willful we were, Martin admitted. We behaved as if the spotlight was on us all the time that we were the only people in the world. Danny would go into a place and say, this is for the damage. And they'd say, there is no damage. And he'd say, there fucking will be. <laughs> Can you imagine? Doesn't it give you some idea of just what it'd be like to, 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 to live with him or to manage him or yeah. to work with him? Any kind of association. What a really complicated guy. Yeah, yeah. So I, I quite like my position. That I, I, although I'd never met him, actually. I like my position. As you met him? Records. You did met, I meet him? him? You and me met him. Oh, did you we meet him at the... He did whistle test. Oh, yes, he did. No, you're he did whistle right. test with uh, Carmel. Yeah, you're right. It was the same show. I completely forgot. And I never forget when Carmel was sound checking, and they were a rather untried band, Carmel's band. And there was John Martin and Danny Thompson just sitting in the front row, giving them the eye. It's like, a, you know, it was like. This is coming back to me. Absolutely. It's funny they, I didn't forget those shows. No, I, no, I, remember that. I remember that really clearly. Yeah, it was like they were trying to, 
they were trying to pull rank, you know. Because didn't Carmel have a string prop. bass player as well? I, as well, yeah, history. absolutely. And, and so it was all a bit kind of, you yeah, know, we're, we're jazz, are, we're a bit yeah. lounge, we're a bit cabaret, you know. And they were going, I don't think you are. Uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Dilettante. So. We'll have to tell Graham that for the second edition of uh, of this book, which yeah. there no doubt will be. Uh, will be sure. There it is. God, it's good. Small Fantastic. Hours, one Small of our hours. ten books of the year.